Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about the protein collagen. This collagen is the major protein in extracellular matrix. It is also present in all the tissues of the body. So this collagen is the most abundant protein in the body. So there are some one-liners which have been asked in many examinations. The most common collagen present in our body is type 1 collagen which is present in around 90% of patients. And major collagen which is present in dermis, ligaments and tendons is also type 1 collagen. Then major collagen which is present in cartilage is type 2 collagen around 40 to 50 percent it is present in cartilage. Then major collagen which is present in aorta is type 3 collagen and type 1 collagen. Then major collagen present in basement membrane is mainly type 4 collagen is present in basement membrane. Then if you see the major collagen present in heterotopic cartilage. In heterotropic cartilage we have type 10 collagen. Then in skin hemidesmosomes you see the major collagen is type 7 collagen is present mainly in skin hemidesmosomes and in rhabdomyosarcoma cells we have the major um, type of collagen is 11th co sorry 19 collagen is present mainly in the major rhabdomyosarcoma though you don't remember till here at least you should remember these types of collagens which are present right next what about the structure of collagen structure of collagen is a it has alpha chain okay it has an actually it has three alpha chains okay and in the three alpha chains the third amino acid is always a glycine okay and these three alpha chains are actually arranged in triple helix manner i'm sorry like this and like this it is arranged in a triple helix structure okay that to right handed triple helix structure so it is wounded has right sided triple, right handed triple helix structure right this also has one more arrangement which is named as quarter staggered arrangement in this quarter staggered arrangement this is a lateral association of triple handed sorry triple helical units and this quarter staggered arrangement is responsible for tensile strength of collagen fibers so now let us learn about the synthesis of collagen fibers in the synthesis of collagen fibers, we have two different types of events. Those which occur in the cell called as intracellular events. First and foremost, there will be cleavage of signal peptide. Then you will see the hydroxylation of prolyl and lysyl residues. The lysyl residues and prolyl residues get hydroxylated and it forms hydroxyprolin and hydroxylysin. This hydroxyprolin and hydroxylysin are formed in the presence of, for this formation of hydroxyprolin and hydroxylysin. We require prolin and lysin hydroxylase enzyme for which vitamin C is the coenzyme and alpha ketoglutarate is also involved in this reaction of prolyl and lysyl residues getting converted to hydroxyprolin and hydroxylysin. 
then you see the glycosylation of some lysyl residues occurs with galactose or glucose with galactose or glucose you see hydroxylation of um, this hydroxylysin residues and then you will see formation of intrachain and interchain disulfide bonds are formed later and finally with these triple bonds triple i mean three alpha helixes will form a triple helix at the end okay so these are the events which occur intracellularly then thus a collagen triple helix is formed but still this triple helix is not uh, does not have such as tensile strength it is not so strong so for it to become strong we have extracellular events in the extracellular events first there is cleavage of amino and carboxy terminal propeptides occurs there is cleavage of amino and carboxy terminal of propeptide terminal propeptide here there is first event is cleavage of amino and carboxy terminal propeptide then the triple helix structure will now form an arrangement of quarter staggered arrangement is seen okay and then there is also oxidative followed by this oxidative deamination will occur in oxidative deamination of mainly lysyl residues lysyl and hydroxy lysyl will undergo oxidative deamination in the presence of lysyl oxidase and it forms aldehydes this occurs in the presence of copper now there is one more type of cross linkages occur to make it stiff that is covalent cross linkages are seen where you see both interchain and intrachain linkages are seen with the help of skiff bases thus forming the stable covalent and strong um, collagen molecule right so what is important the next is the clinical problems due to collagen issues so if you see we have uh, this is asked many times in aims examination okay so if you see in the diseases the gene call a, see first we have type 1 collagen is coded by the gene cola1 and cola1a2 okay so this results in the diseases whenever there is defect in these genes it results in osteogenesis imperfecta and osteoporosis and it also results in ehler danlos syndrome then a uh, defect in type 2 collagen forming gene that is call 2a1 result in chondrodysplasia or osteoarthritis osteoarthritis then defect in type 3 collagen which is due to the gene col3a1 gene causes ehler danlos syndrome type 4 whereas defect in type 4 collagen gene formation collagen chain formation due to defect in co col 4a3 and col 4a6 genes results in alport syndrome then defect in type 5 collagen which is due to the defect in col 5a1 and col 5 A2 genes results in classical Ehler Danlos syndrome then defect in type 7 collagen due to the defect in COL7A1 results in epidermolysis 
bullosa dystrophicans which is a dermatological disorder then defect in collagen type 1 due to call pen a1 results in squid metaphyseal chondrodysplasia dysplasia squid metaphyseal chondrodysplasia dysplasia occurs due to this then defect or mutation in lysyl hydroxylase enzyme results in ehler danlos syndrome type 6 or kyphoscoliotic ehler danlos syndrome and this lysyl hydroxylase uh, requires vitamin C. If vitamin C deficiency, it results in scurvy. It also causes lysyl hydroxylase deficiency. Then, we have something called as Adam metallopeptidase with thrombospadin. Thrombospadin type 1 motif. If there is defect in this, this will result in Ehler-Danlos syndrome type 7 then defect in lysyl oxidase deficiency results in minkes syndrome this minkes syndrome can also occur due to the deficiency of copper because lysyl oxidase requires copper as the cofactor right so this is about the collagen its synthesis and diseases Thank you guys for watching my lecture. Thank you.